team safety does it come into question at all do you, do you change your thinking at all are you any more concerned when something like, like this takes place or has this been something that has almost been anticipated in your mind that things like this would pop up and and thus you've accepted you know the the inevitable in some regards yeah knowing that uh you know all the things that are happening day to day um you know coming in coming into camp we we said you know i, I said it that we, we're going to keep learning every day we're going to keep educating ourselves every day just because of everything that's going on and a lot of things are uncertain out there so this is this is part of that reality and uh and once again i'm going to go back to those to those protocols i think those protocols were made because uh, we knew where you know something like this might happen, and the best we can do is just keep following that and you know being being consistent with uh, with what we've done uh, here, you know, and then and at the same time, you know, just maintain our focus to to our game in our case. You know, today we're we're getting prepared here to play to play the Red Sox. I mean, we we know of the news. We uh, you know we keep following that protocol. We keep learning as we make just our first road trip now and uh, you know but at the same time we keep we keep preparing to play the game thanks hey Luis just curious if Jed Lowry had gotten his second opinion yet and if so what the opinion was well uh, we you know we still with the with the first um, check that he had with uh, Dr. Alchek and you know so, so we're trying to trigger that source of his uh, discomfort and pain I mean that's that's where we stand still so Second opinion, as far as like, I don't know the timeline, the date. So, you know, I'll reassess when I, when I, when I hear from that second opinion when he got it. But the plan is still for him to get a second opinion. Is that correct? Yes, but I, okay. I the timeline of that, like, I, I, I can reassess to you. I can't let you know, Tim, and okay, they just haven't got it yet. Thank you. Sure. Hey, Louis, uh, who's gonna start for you guys tomorrow? Uh, still TBD. I mean, there's you know the game yesterday and. Uh, you know, we used we used uh, long uh, Oswald and then semi long Seawold and back to back for Strick. We we got to see how the game goes today, um, and then that that could lead to our decision to who's gonna who's gonna get the ball tomorrow. Do you uh, do you guys um, are you able to say who who you're maybe considering as you you go through those conversations? I'd rather uh, I'd rather wait. I'd rather wait see the game just in stay and then you know how it goes, what we have to do. Um, you know, so many things happen in the games. Everything we have planned out for yesterday's game, obviously, uh, we have to, you know, move quick and get, get our long guys in. Um, and then, you know, like I said, we're, we're going on today, and then what, whatever we get out today, we'll, we'll dictate for that starter. Thank you. Sure, Justin. Hey, Louie, uh, I mean, the whole lineup seems kind of frustrated right now, but uh, Alonzo in particular just, just looks like uh, he's really feeling for it. What, what are you seeing with him? With him, um, I'm, uh, he's chasing, uh, Mike. He's, uh, I seen his front foot um, just landing a little, you know, a tap late, sometimes overstriding. That, that leads to getting beat by the fastball. I mean, you overstride, you create more velocity on the fastball, and that he's, he's been doing that. Um, I, what I do like is his, is his attitude towards it, you know. So, you know, he's, he's able to maintain his attitude. is within himself. And he wants to see what he's doing. He wants to start feeling it. So, um, you know, we'll see how he goes today. When when somebody is under control with his emotions and uh, and he's can, you know able to uh, you know hear hear his coaches around him, he can make quick adjustments. So, you know, that's what that's what we're expecting right now from Pete. And just I mean, this is a, a solid lineup, top to bottom. Are you just uh, surprised how much it, it's it struggled in that Brave series? Sorry, I'm sorry, Mike. I I missed the first. I'm just saying, uh, you know, it's a solid lineup, top to bottom. It it seemed, but are you surprised that the manner in which it struggled uh, against the Braves? Well, not 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 really. I know I know we, you know, I know this team can hit. Um, you know, it's just such a small sample. I know, you know, the short season and and different things. You can you can start thinking, well, it's a short season, but it's just a still a small sample, you know, in, in, in baseball. I know that uh, teams can go through this. Uh, you know, we've, we've had guys that, you know, started clicking like Porto, like Nims. Uh, Rosario didn't get a hit yesterday, but we, we, lo we like where he is. Uh, you know, guys are going to start, they're going to start, uh, uh, 
you know, heating up and, and that lineup should get connected. I mean, you guys seen it before and, uh, you know, it's looking forward, you know, the knock on wood, we start hitting, uh, hitting tonight. Hey, Louis, you guys have obviously been pretty strict with your protocols, but, you know, moments like Friday when, when Cespedes hits that home run and everyone kind of mobs him in the dugout, did, do you remind guys that, like, like, are you okay with that kind of thing happening, or do you have to remind guys that even uh, in an emotional excitement state like that, you have to still try to adhere to the protocols as much as possible? Yes, we have constant constant talks about uh, you know staying strict with the with the protocol and being consistent with it. And you know, I feel that we've done a good job. We did a great job in camp, and this weekend, uh, as the season started and the emotions were flying, and we you know we got we had some. Uh, fist pumps, high fives, uh, you know, all that. And we reinforce about hand sanitizing, you know, still keeping the distance and doing everything that you that we can do. And also outside the facility, you know, just, just the behavior as well, just being solid, you know, knowing that uh, we have to be healthy. That's our number one priority. So we, we keep reminding each other. Uh, we keep following the MLB protocol. We, we keep following our protocol. Um, you know, at our home base, at our bubble. Now going on the road, we're we're uh, we want to keep on doing it. This is our first taste of a road trip. You know, with with this, you know, with uh, in this time. So, uh, by the way, we we came here on on buses, and I think you know we're going to reinforce that majority of our trips, or the ones that we can do actually, are going to be on buses. Um, so we we rolled in some you know like six buses and try to minimize as many people as we could. Just we. We reinforce the distancing and now being in the, you know, in the hotel as well with taking measures. So everyone is, um, you know, it's just being consistent with, with the protocol. So. Hey, Louis, a uh, couple of quick lineup questions. Um, Cespit is just a matter of getting him off his feet after playing for three days. Yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, that's what, you know, first three and then, you know, bus ride here. Uh, you know, I think, I think, uh, you know, it's, it's a good thing. As, as you guys know, it's the first time he plays uh, three in a row, even from the DH spot, uh, you know, and then, and then the bus trip to here. Uh, but, you know, he's available off the bench. Any, any consideration to playing, any consideration to playing a Dom at first base in DH as opposed to the other way around? Yes, yes. Dom, whether left, first, uh, you know, there's always that consideration. Uh, you know, to to have him in there. I mean, I'm I'm glad he's able to start his first game, first game of the season. He had a really good camp. Uh, you know, just looking forward to see his uh, that hut back from camp. You know, just right right away be present. And last one for me with with Peterson on the taxi squad. What what did you like about him both in spring training, the first one, and also what you saw in summer camp? His demeanor. Uh, this kid just just you know great demeanor. He presents as that. Um, you know, that guy that wants to compete, that wants to get you out, that uh, he's always searching, he's always asking questions. I like his pitch ability, um, you know, as far as like repertoire and also controlling running game, fielding his position. There's just a good package there. So, you know, just, you know, you know great, great guy to have uh, in the pool, great guy, great guy to have in the taxi squad for any, uh, um, you know, any strategy or any reason that, that he may come in for. Thank you. Hey, Louie, I'm curious. Have you got a sense yet from your players, either on the bus ride this night or, or today, around the hotel or at the ballpark, you know, how they are reacting to, to the news of the Marlins? Um, I talked to a few. Um, they, they're aware of what's, uh, what's happening, but I've had previous talks with, with everyone here. I mean, uh, before coming to camp, you know, while being in camp about the reality of something like this happening. And that's why the protocol that MLB, uh, you know, put out there that we are following, uh, you know, in our, in our, since our camp and now going entering the season and now being on the road for the first time, like you're mentioning on the bus ride into the, the hotel for the first time in the season. You know, we, we knew that following that will be, uh, you know, we feel pretty strongly that we're going to be we're going to be safe, which is a priority for everyone, you know, coming the season. So it's, uh, you know, their concern is, you know, it should be same as mine. You know, we're definitely all, all concerned. There's a lot of things happening in the world right now. Uh, but at the same time, you know, we feel optimistic 
about the protocol that MLB put out there. And then, you know, we, we all prepare before coming to CAM and we keep learning uh, each day. Thank you. I'm just wondering, what are some of the immediate differences that you've seen at Fenway, um, whether that's where the, what the clubhouse regulations are like, what the players are doing, what maybe the dugout looks like, just things like that. So, so it's my first time here, Disha, uh, but I, I already got descriptions from, uh, from you know, the, the club, our clubhouse manager here, our clubhouse manager, and, uh, you know, members of our coaching staff just uh, they expanded some things here. The players are now spread out where it was a concourse. You know, I think fans used to be in that area, and the coaching staff is where the where the actual players' clubhouse is. Um, and some of the coaches are actually in another room. So it, it, they did a good job here, spreading out everybody to fulfill protocol. Um, you know, but we were we were wondering before coming here, and I always heard it how tight it was going to be. But uh, you know, it seems. For everyone just telling me how it was and how it is now, they did a, they did an unbelievable job here. How much of those differences, just from the way that you guys operate at City Field, is more of a learning curve and more of a challenge as you adapt to uh, different ballparks? Yes, it is. I mean, with right right away from last night to to here, we've seen we've seen uh, the, you know the new things and um, you know in the hotel. I think we're staying in in a, uh, you know, two levels where the whole team is only. So the, tra the you know, uh, the traffic is, is just us. Uh, it's like, a, it's like our, our bubble. And then we get on the bus, we come here and we say the bus, we're, we're, we have like six buses. Um, and, you know, we're, last night we were like 10 people a bus uh, to come here and make sure that we, we maintain distance in while in the bus, you know, wearing our mask. So we are, we, we are strict. I mean, we, and we're still gonna call each other out, you know, that we need to be strict, we need to be consistent. And, um, you know, we keep on learning. As we go to each field and we learn our ways in or our ways around, we're gonna keep on learning, you know, to make sure that we're, we're, we're following the protocol that MLB threw up. Um, just last one for me, in light of the Marlins situation, do you maybe tell your players that they should start wearing their masks more often, potentially maybe even when they're on the field or when they're physically playing the game? Well, uh, you know, we're, we've been we've been very good following that protocol of MLB has uh, has given us and the one that we also reinforce. And um, you know, whether they wear their mask out there on the field, and the, and they you know, it's obviously their option. It's nothing that we're gonna you know ask them to do mandatory. Uh, they they are wearing the mask, but they need to wear them according to the protocol. They've been really good about that. And the distancing has been has been key. Uh, we have been doing the the fist this palm and the high fives in the in, in the dugout but they they're able to do the hand sanitizers as we have them in different locations in the dugout back home i mean something that we're going to see here but uh as far as like mask or doing getting more strict about it i mean it's nothing that um we talked about ever since we found out about, about the news i mean we've been doing a good job i feel and uh you know our message as a team i know is going to still be that we need to be consistent with what we've been doing Hey, Luis. Also, on the, to round back to the Marlins thing, they, right before the season started, played the Braves in Atlanta a couple times, and, of course, the Braves played you guys over the weekend. Any concern there that there could have been exposure via that path? I mean, uh, our, our, you know, our concern is, is with the news this morning. I mean, that you just play the, the, the Braves, and there's nothing that, you know, we, we can think of that's following us right now. I mean, it's uh, – um, I mean, obviously, we're we're concerned that something like this can happen, and uh, you know. But at the same time, we're optimistic that the protocol is there to contain something like this. So it's it's uh, you know just playing the Braves. It's it's I don't think there's anything that really is hunting us. You know that what may happen. It's uh, you know we, we feel pretty good about coming from home playing them. Got it. Thank you. Hey, Louis, just wondering with the Red Sox using what I think is an opener tonight, how did that influence how you put your lineup together? Well, I mean, we, we do our homework with the, the same way we do it uh, you know, with a starter. And uh, you look at his repertoire, we look at past history, we look at, you know, outing that, that he's, he's had recently. Um, so, you know, we also look at who the long guys are that they have, who's being used lately and stuff like that. And we anticipate what what the plan may, may be there and then how the guys should should approach it. So, you know, we already had 
a few meetings as far as like, you know, for the hitters, uh, you know, advancing and, and, and different things like that. So, you know, our lineup is very set. Uh, and I think everyone is uh, right now pretty much ready as far as putting a plan together and how their pitchers are and uh, what the repertoire is. Thank you. Sure, Tim.